If we're not praying, guys, we don't have a prayer. I'm Brian Patrick. We're beginning a new series we call Keys for Life, and we look closely at the prayer life, this time on Crossing the Goal. It is great to be back with you here for another series of Crossing the Goal. We call this the Keys for Life series, and you remember the Crossing the Goal team, Peter Herbeck, the Vice President of Renewal Ministries, the founder and president of Focus, Curtis Martin, the Fellowship of Catholic University Students, and our old coach, former All-Pro NFL wide receiver and NFL coach, Daniel Bramwitz. I'm getting older. Hey, getting good older. to have you guys back. <laughs> the Keys for Life. Peter, give us an overview of the series. Yeah, before that, I was just thinking we're at it. We're starting another series. How many have we done so far? I don't know. At least 100 we, shows, right, Coach? Yeah. Well, would you believe we've done 104 shows, and this will be our 13th series, guys. Wow. I didn't know I had to put up with you guys this yeah, long. Yeah, you could last that long. Where's the bonus, man? We're waiting yeah, for the right. bonus. Yeah, yeah, no, we hit 100 exactly, shows. You know, exactly. there'll be some kind of a party or something. So <laughs> this is our 13th series. Our 13th yes. series. And remember that these series are available. Many of them are available on our website at crossingthegold.com. And uh, the, it's just, I'm grateful for, I think, what the Lord has given us in these series, how he's inspired us and encouraged us. Because I think there's a lot of very practical, inspiring stuff in these various series, just like this one, we're gonna talk about what are the keys to living well, really the keys to following the Lord and live a life fruitful in Him. Yeah, and the first part of the series is the prayer life. Yeah, and you know, we've talked about prayers on our show constantly. We always bring it up because we know how critical it is, but we wanna dig into it a little deeper and talk about what is prayer? You know, why do we pray? When and where should we pray? The types of prayers you guys will get into, the benefits of prayer, and the obstacles to prayer. And I think that'll be very interesting. Mm -hmm. It's so foundational. Really at the heart of Christianity is a relationship and prayer is how we communicate. And the fact of the matter is most of us aren't very good at prayer. And so to look at it and say, look, real practically, how do I grow in my prayer life? That's gonna be really important for us to understand if we wanna become the men Christ wants us to be. Absolutely. Yeah, we all know we're supposed to pray, but a lot of guys really don't know how to pray. So we need a game plan for the prayer life. And we have one for you. Curtis and Peter with the game plan next, right here on Crossing the Gold. Curtis Martin, I'm here with Peter Herbeck, and we're talking about prayer life. Peter, why is it that we pray? Because the Lord's taught us to pray, He's called us to pray. What, the great thing is the foundation of Christian prayer that uh, separates it from any other kind of prayer is that Jesus has given us His relationship with the Father. He's established us in that kind of relationship, father-son relationship that He had with the Father. And so the apostles saw Him, saw Him pray, saw Him pray quite a bit. Finally, they said, Lord, teach us to pray. So he taught them how to pray, taught them the Lord's Prayer, taught them in many different ways to pray, but what Jesus wanted was to establish the relationship between the Father and us so that he could pray, we could pray directly to him. Okay, well, let me, I want to back up even one more step and say, so, okay, we're supposed to pray. What exactly is prayer? I mean, I think a lot of men in particular yeah. struggle with this. What are we talking about? What is prayer? It's actually quite simple. I mean, prayer is conversation with God. It's like having a conversation with a friend. It's speaking from the heart. It's speaking from the desire of the heart. You're in a living relationship, and from that relationship, you just speak heart to heart. It's God gazing on us and us gazing on God, as some of the saints said. You know, the beautiful thing, and we were just talking with some of the college students about prayer, and the, the beautiful rea relationship between praying with Christ, kind of that, that sense of being with Him, maybe meeting Him in the Scriptures and letting Him yeah. speak to you and speak back as you talk to a dear friend. Yeah. and kind of express yourself from the heart and what's going on in yeah. your life. The other part is liturgy, where we as Catholics are able to not just pray to Christ, but actually with yeah. Him. He leads us in prayer in liturgy. So we have the Mass, we have the rest of the sacraments. So there really is a, a wealth of prayer within the Catholic yeah. Church. I mean, the starting point, Pope John Paul II said at one point that the secret to a vital Christian life 
is the combination both of personal prayer, my prayer and when I'm alone with the Lord and I'm speaking heart to heart, and the corporate liturgical prayer of the church. He said, you put those two together, the Spirit of God is going to lead us to live a life of prayer, really, at the, at the foundation. So prayer can be individual prayer, it can be corporate prayer, it can be personal, me just speaking to the Lord, it can be more formal prayer where we, we're communally together praying the formal prayers of the church together, whether it's the Lord's Prayer or the Mass itself is a prayer of thanksgiving to the Lord. So there's all kinds of forms of prayer. There's adoration, there's thanksgiving, there's petition, there's intercession, there's praying in tongues, there's just all kinds of ways that the Lord gives us to pray. And it's interesting, we have so many ways of prayer, so many things He's given to us because He wants us to be in conversation with Him. He wants us to walk with Him and live with Him and talk with Him and give thanks to Him. And I think it's always important for me to remember that it's not simply growing in the habit of prayer, which we can do, but really at the foundation stone of our prayer life is a conversion of heart. Yeah. That the way that I can pray, that you can pray, is that we have given our lives to Christ and that He gives us His Holy Spirit right. who teaches us how to pray. Literally comes inside, lives yeah. within us and teaches us to pray. He's lived for all of eternity in relationship with the Son and the Father. He now comes and lives in us to, to dr dr drive us back to the yeah. Father and the Son and allow us to be in deep, intimate, yeah. everlasting friendship with them. Yeah. The Romans chapter 8, building on what you're saying, the Spirit of God within us proclaims to our spirit in convinces us that we're sons and daughters of God. Yeah. And that conviction and that, that convincing is so thorough that from within our own heart, what Jesus is producing is a genuine trust and a capacity to start to relate to God as our Father. He really is our Father. So right from our heart, Jesus wants us to cry out, Father, Daddy, God, something deeply personal and deeply secure and confident in God's presence. We're called to abide in Christ. We're yeah. told in John chapter 15 to abide Him the way that a branch ab abides in a vine, that apart from Him we can do nothing. And to have that, and for me, one of the key senses of prayer is just practicing the presence of God to realize that He is yeah. always and everywhere thinking of me and invites yeah. me to always and everywhere think of Him. And as my life is transformed by that realization, as I'm walking through, there are no accidents. Yeah. God is providentially directing my life, and so I can accept the bad, what I perceive to be bad, as well as the good, and yeah. rejoice that He has a path for me, a plan for me. And if I embrace that, I become who I'm meant to be. The best way to learn how to pray is just start doing it, too. Just do it. Yeah. It's one of those things, you grow in prayer as you start to step out. You, you hear the invitation from the Lord that's saying, come follow me, come let me teach you how to pray. Let the church teach you, let the saints teach you, let your friends teach you how to pray. Step into that, and as you do it, you grow in your capacity to hear the Lord. Listening is a very important part of prayer. The capacity to hear Him and to respond what he's, to what He's saying, but also to be able to express ourselves to Him in the many ways that the church leads us in. This was one of the first steps in my own personal life, but also as we work with thousands of college students all over the country now, one of the first things, the very first things after they come to embrace Christ is to teach them how to pray. Yeah. And just to begin slowly, you don't have to be an expert overnight, yeah. but to set aside some time, maybe 10 or 15 minutes with the sacred scriptures, just to open them up, probably the gospels, yeah. and just begin to read and allow him to speak to you through the scriptures and then you to sit in quiet and then when something touches you, speak back. Yeah. And in that quiet conversation, you begin to recognize the Lord for who he is, he yeah. comes alive and he starts to change your life. Yeah. This is a powerful form of prayer. How would be another way that you've learned how to pray? I think one of the things that, one of the simplest things, first thing in the morning, when you get up in the morning, is before you do anything else, you know, either slip out, kneel down to the side of your bed and welcome the day. Say, Lord, thank you for this day. Lord, speak, your servant is listening. I want to give you everything in my day today. Help me do that. So make a morning offering, first thing in the day. Yeah, another way that has always been important for our families, just to take a little bit of time right after that last song at Mass and just to gather together as a family and take some, a moment to thank God and raise up anything that's on our heart. It's been a beautiful yeah. way to, we have kind of what we call a holy huddle, just for a minute or yeah. two after Mass. Brian? Thanks, Curtis and Peter. Great simple game plan, Coach. Just do it. Sounds simple enough, but it's pretty tough. Yeah, right, exactly. There's obstacles in prayer. In fact, when we start lifting our voices to the Lord, the devil's going to be on us like a bad habit. Oh, so yeah. we got to be, be careful. All right, you ready to break our holy huddle, get to the red zone? Ready? Ready? Break! break. Let's go.
We're looking at the prayer life in the red zone here in our series, Keys for Life. And you know, Coach, we all have our prayers. We've been taught prayers throughout our lives, but let's talk about making prayer personal. Yeah, like what is prayer life to me? Guys, you know, I'm serious. It's my lifeblood. I mean, without prayer, I don't know what I would do. You know, all those years I remember not really in prayer. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering why I was stumbling around and wasn't happy with myself and wasn't at peace. Well, there was a reason because I was mm -hmm. not in communication with God. Now, once I started, you know, like you said in the, in the game plan, step out. Just do it. It's yeah. time to go do yeah. it. The, the prayer, you have to have prayer in your life or you're, you're going to stumble around guys all over the place. And what I started with is a commitment. I got to commit to prayer. Then I got to set a time aside to pray. Mm -hmm. Don't say I'm going to pray for 30 minutes starting off. You're not going to do that. 10, 15 minutes in a conversation with the Lord in a place. Where do I feel comfortable praying? Is it a couch? Is it in the, uh, outside in the garden area? Is it at work? Wherever it is, these kind of things, it gets you started. And don't expect to change God with your prayer. The <laughs> prayer changes me. God is constant. God yeah. is always there with His grace. The prayer changes me. When I can take time to prayer and go to God, instead of thinking about how I'm going to do something, right. it changes me, and it's, it's a great gift. You no, know, Jesus said, uh, I know Lord, I call you friends. And He wants us to relate to Him like a friend. Yes. And he wants us to speak honestly from our heart. You know, sometimes you hear things the Lord said to some of the saints. He said, I want you to just speak in simple language to me. I want you to just tell me what's on your heart. I want you to just tell me in very direct ways the simple, simple truth, you know, that's going on inside you. I remember back when I was in college, we were, I was in the college seminary for a while. And, and uh, three or four of my friends and I went on a little retreat weekend together. We were trying to, we were going to seek the Lord for particular answers to questions, you know, that we had. And we didn't quite know how to pray together, and it was a little awkward, it was a little, bit, little stiff, and we were reading the Bible a little bit together the first couple days, and are you hearing anything? Are you hearing anything we talked? No, no, I'm, you know, we were trying to get some direction. We weren't getting any direction. The last morning we were together, the simplest guy in our group, his name is Jim, he's a priest today, and he's, he's a wonderful priest. He's a great preacher, a great guy. And the rest of us sort of heady guys, he just said, look, you guys, let's just go after God. I said, what do you mean? He goes, let's just, with our hearts, let's just pour our hearts out to God. I said, okay, you know, because we didn't quite know how to do how that. Do so do we that? all kind of closed our eyes. We were very pious little guys. And we closed our eyes. And all of a sudden, I heard him and he goes, God, we're just a bunch of dumb sheep down here bumping into each other. <laughs> we don't know where we're going. We need your help. And then all of a sudden, I heard him say, oh, come on, God. <laughs> he said like that. It was just so honest from his yeah. heart. He was yes. crying out to God. That's prayer. And I'm telling you, within 15 minutes, the Lord came. And I can't explain it. The power of God came on that room and just touched our lives and inspired us yeah. and moved us. One of the guys who's a bishop today, one of the guys, he was weeping. He was just weeping on the floor. The Lord wow. was touching him by his love. And it came from that just raw honesty from this guy, you exactly. know, crying out to God. Good, exactly. simple prayer. Yeah. Come on, God. Yeah. <laughs> That's the power. I know in my own life, it's helped me. And then working with guys and focus, trying to help them to see that David is such a great model here. Exactly what you're t looking at is when you look in the Psalms, you see David starting the Psalm, and sometimes it's just like, how long, O Lord? Yeah. And there's this gut-wrenching cry, and there's kind of notion that we're actually called to be the new Israel. And if you break the word Israel down, it's not just a nation, it's a man. And it's man, his name means to wrestle with God. Yeah. We are the new Israel. We're supposed to wrestle with him. And I think there's so many things in the world or in my life that are not the way they need to be. And to be able to come before the Lord and say, come on. Yeah. And I'm trusting, but please, I need your help. I'm in way over my head. Yeah. And to have that willingness to wrestle with him. I think as any dad, I know I, with my, my younger guys, my older guys beat me up, but the younger guys, <laughs> uh, I like yeah. to wrestle with them. It's a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah. You know, Curtis, you said something very important in there, and I'd like you to expound upon it a little bit, is uh, sort of the consistency. Sometimes we pray and expect something right away. It, it's a, an ongoing process, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, God will can answer prayers right away and work miracles. He does yeah, that. Right. But frequently, He wants to work over time. The answer to many prayers for us are, is not yes or no, it's wait. And because the timing isn't right or the request isn't quite right, He needs to sharpen our, our, our senses and give us greater insight and to be able to stay there and wrestle with Him. I, I, we're working with a, one of our sons who's going through a challenging time right now, and we've been for years, and we've seen right, progress. Right. But the fact of the matter is, everything's not better. And to be able to sit back and say, it's okay, I trust in the pilgrimage of our life that you are with us, Lord. You know, another thing, guys, that, that uh, I, I know you guys probably experience this too, is the consistency, but also dryness. 
uh, you sure. go along and, and uh, ooh, it's like feeling, I'm feeling so good, praying, everything's working out. Then all of a sudden you hit a period then there mm. that's, just where, like where are you, where are you, yeah. Lord? It's like grind, I gotta, and, and you absolutely have to grind through it. I mean, yeah, just I mean, keep going. going. Right, just keep showing up. Yeah. Just show keep up, show just up. keep yeah. showing up, yes. just make it happen. And yeah. the Lord needs, there's not something wrong we're going through no, dry no, periods no. often. I mean, sometimes maybe we do do things that, we get, you know, I commit sin in a way that, and I, and I don't pray fo in a focused way, and so I can drift in terms of the effect of my prayer. But we're, the Lord's going to take us through dry periods because He wants to wean us from our attachment to experience and to feeling good and everything is under my control, and just to trust Him with our life. That's what He's after, faith that is a radical trust to Him that allows us to abandon our life to Him in love. I think it will help him. us out. Guys, you probably know better than I. I, I thought I read or heard Mother Teresa had a dry spell like a oh, long dry 25 spell. or 30 years. Yeah. Many, many, many years. years. That's what the Lord does with his best friends, I think. You know what yeah, I mean? The yeah. ones who are closest to him, he really tries them and tests them on a very deep level. But what did Mother prayer. Teresa do? She just kept doing right. the work. She kept that he showing gave up. Her. I yeah. found when I hit a spiritual dry spell, it often has to do with why don't I feel this? So I try to pray for others. You know, when I know that someone else is suffering, when I pray for them, it gives me a peace. Mm -hmm. Because it takes my mind off me, puts it on them and what God can do and will do for them. I, that's a good point. I, mean, I think what a, a very good prayer and a very simple prayer is when you can't, things aren't going the way you want them to go and you can't figure it out. And there's the temptation to say, where are you, God? Why aren't you delivering? To be able to come to the point, to fight through that stuff and come to the point and say, Lord, you know, I just yeah. give it to you. I trust you. I trust you, Lord. I know you're here because you promised, because you said I'm with you always until the end of time. I will never abandon you. Right now, Lord, I'm going to trust all of this really complicated, difficult stuff into your hands, and I'm going to just keep coming back because I know you'll lead me through this. You know, we have the, the greatest prayer we have, of course, is the Mass, you know, yeah. the, the, which is wonderful, and it's corporate prayer. But we also have individual prayer. But I think another very important for, for married people out there is spousal prayer. That my wife and I, at times, we have our individual time of prayer, but usually on a weekend where we have a little time, we pray together. And we'll bring up, you know, of course, the children and grandchildren yeah. is in the middle of that mix of praying sure. for them. But we try to keep that and, and hold on to each other and sort of pray and then meditate and reflect a little bit. And it really helps our marriage. So what does that look like? Because I think a lot of men would like to be able to pray with their right. wives. They just don't know how to do it. So, I mean, so is, we're talking we'll just five, ten down, minutes? Yeah, yeah, five or ten, not a, not a whole lot of time. Right. Of course, we pray longer because we've been doing it for a long time. Right. We're going to be been married for 46. Yeah. 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 Right. Uh, it, oh, I've got a lot of prayer, catch it up to do. <laughs> but anyway, it's sort of sit down like, you know, we're at the couch here and sort of just to hold hands and just start praying. Should we the leader, I'll lead her. Could you show us how quiet. you do that? No, just, oh, yeah. just, no, no, no. No. just hold my but, hand. But uh, <laughs> no, just holding our hands. But sometimes it's just quiet. Yeah. Not yeah. saying a word. We're listening to the Lord speaking to us, and then all of a sudden, the, she might get a word of prophecy, or I'll get something to deal with a particular thing that we weren't even thinking of. That all yeah. of a sudden, because a lot of people say, "Well, how does the Lord speak to you?" Well, it's not like. Danny, Curtis, go do this. It's in your heart or it'll bring something up. Claudia this is what you're you. dealing with in <laughs> yeah. your life. Yeah. Or sort like of. you might be sitting there and you get a passage that yeah, just absolutely. comes alive. Like we did at our, at our meeting when we were preparing for yes. this, you yes. know, a month ago when yeah. we met, we were preparing for these shows. And Danny said, you know, I felt like God gave me a word that I want to share with you yeah. guys. And it was just the four of us in the hotel room. And you read that passage to us and said, wow, it really did resonate with mm -hmm. each and every one of us because right. it was a living word, a personal word that the Lord gave us. So, Coach, would you just give us an example of a, a simple prayer that we can close yeah, our red zone with? Yeah, absolutely. Join with us out here, guys, and, and relax, chill out a little bit. Just like, come on, God, you know, <laughs> this, let's just close our eyes and, and sort of hold your hands out in front of you. Just relax. Just don't tight fist it. Open it up. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We worship you. you Lord, we're in awe of you. You are the glorious, the only one, the, the Lord of glory. Lord, we praise and worship you. Lord, we thank you for everything that you've given us. The very breath that we have, we thank you, Lord, for that. Everything that we do, our work, our family, we put before you. Lord, I also come before you, all of us men, all of us out here, all of the people that are praying, that we are sorry for any time that we offended you, Lord. Please forgive us. I know you do. Mary, we ask you to intercede on our behalf. Lord, touch us. Always let us walk in the path that you direct us. We ask this all in your precious name. 
Amen. 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 The Father and of the Son and of the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. 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 Thanks, brother. Thank you, Amen. Coach. And we're in the uh, end zone next. We'll wrap up our prayer life episode of the Keys for Life. And we'll get into our email bag next on Crossing the Goal. zone for our life of prayer show on this uh, keys for life series we want to go to the email bag before we get the last word from these guys on the prayer life skip says I love the church and frequent daily mass pray the rosary every day I go to bed in prayer open the day in prayer and he says that my friends frequently mention times when they hear the Lord speak to them he said I don't feel that he said I want a personal relationship but don't recognize it what can you suggest well, first I want to say good job skip I mean, he is praying every yeah, day but, but also yeah. I think sometimes we we say we're looking for a particular feeling, something that, I, that I'm going to know inside. I'm just going to have this feeling that it's going to confirm this relationship. I think the first place we need to start always is to receive the truth about who we are in Christ. You do have a relationship with Christ. You have a relationship with the Father. You're, you're, you're His Son. You're Jesus' friend and brother. And to make a decision to say, I'm going to live in that truth. I'm just going to accept it. And I'm going to act like it. I'm going to act on it. I'm going to speak to the Lord that way and thank Him for the relationship He's given to me and thank Him every single day and watch that change. Good, uh, Peter. Skip, another thing you need to remember is that uh, you're already in a relationship. If you're doing the things that you're doing, but you say that you need to hear the Lord, well, you just keep going and, and let the Lord take care of His business. He'll speak to you. You just need to be listening. You need to quiet yourself sometimes and let the Lord speak to you. Yeah, it's that small, quiet voice. He says he's like standing in the uh, in the edge of the cave, waiting for the the wind or the fire, and it's yes. that that small voice. All right, Greg writes from uh, Frisco, Texas. He says, "Hey guys, I wanted to let you know that we're starting a Cross in the Gold ministry at St. Francis of Assisi Parish in Frisco." Greg and some of his friends attended our men's conference there in Plano, Texas last year, and he said that they're on fire for this. So these are, we have some great resources. We do. Just go to our website, www.crossandthegold.com, and first of all, you can start off with your Our Father, because there's uh, questions that go along with it, corresponding questions that you can use as an individual or in a group setting. Yeah, the Living the Lord's Prayer is a great resource for beginning yes. this prayer life. So let's get the final word on the prayer life, starting with Peter. Sure. Thanks, Brian. I think one of the things, brothers, that it's important to keep in mind is that this whole call to prayer is sustained by grace. What that means is sustained by God's power. God is giving power so that you can draw near to Him. So what we need to do is make a decision to say, Father, I will step in. I'll accept the power you've given to me so I can go deep into relationship with you as you desire. Prayer is that, that fundamental, vital connection between the living God and, and, and us. And to be able to see that one of the fundamental truths here is that Jesus wants this relationship more than you do, more than I do. He came and gave his life and died so that we could be in relationship with him. Listen to what he says in John chapter 15, verse 4 and following. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Remember, men, prayer is conversation with God. And there's three key things when you're going to start prayer. One is commit to it. Two, set a time aside. And three, find a place. Get after it, men. That's right. And remember to pray for the men and women who are serving our country in the military, many of them watching on the American Forces Network. We appreciate you and salute you and promise you our prayers. Next time on Crossing the Goal, we will look at the love life. For Curtis and Peter and Coach, I'm Brian Patrick. We'll see you next time right here on Crossing the Goal.